everyone, and welcome back to another broadcast of the Healthy Detox Now Summit. Today, I am so excited to introduce to you Rupina Mir. Before Rupina became a holistic health coach, she was climbing the corporate ladder, living an unhealthy lifestyle, and fueling herself with caffeine and sugar like everyone else around her. She wanted more in life, and the universe began to nudge her to course correct. Those nudges quickly became screams after she ignored them, and she was struck with a one-time seizure brought on from popping too many allergy pills. Her perspective on healing quickly shifted after that from a pharmaceutical to a holistic mindset. A few years later, she experienced a brief brush with cervical cancer, which made her even more aware of how food can become our medicine and how our thoughts and stress levels can create a healthy or a diseased body. Today, she is the founder of Zentrition and has been referred to as the hormone whisperer. She helps high achieving women burning the candle, as she put it, from the boardroom to the bedroom, how to crack the code on hormones so that they can unlock effortless energy and fat loss. She has been privileged to be trained by luminaries in the field of mind-body medicine, including Dr. Mark Hyman, Andrew Weil, Sarah Gottfried, Deepak Chopra, and Joe Dispenza, one of my favorites, to name a few. She's also a certified hormone care practitioner trained by Harvard MD, Sarah Gottfried, on the Gottfried Protocol to Balance Hormones. So thank you so much for joining us today, Rupina. It's an honor. Thank you so much for having me. It's equally an honor being here with you. Thank you so much. So to start things off, um, would you tell us a bit about what led you to this path of holistic health and how you got to this point in time of being the hormone whisperer and supporting hundreds of women to balance their hormones? Absolutely. So yeah, like you said, I have a corporate background. I have an MBA. I was in the corporate world. I was fueling myself with sugar and caffeine, like many of your listeners, clueless about nutrition. I was mostly eating out and I had no idea that my processed diet high in refined carbs was practically inviting rogue cancer cells to make a snuggly home in my body. So I've had multiple dark nights of the soul with my own health, which brought me to my knees and conventional medicine never really got to the root cause. And so I just, I had to become an advocate, a health advocate for myself and started researching nutrition and homeopathy and functional medicine. And those were the, the sciences that provided the answers to my own crisis. So pretty much my mess became my message. And when I finally healed from all of this is when I birthed my Hormone Harmony program, because I know so many women are suffering silently. They have this plethora of symptoms, you know, everything from brain fog and resistant weight gain, and they go to their conventional practitioner and they just patronize them, pat them on the back and say, well, you're getting old and just get used to it. Or they're offered mm -hmm. a prescription for birth control or antidepressants, which don't really address the root cause and ushered out the door. But there is so much more you can do. There is with lifestyle medicine, there is so much you can do. And that's how I healed myself. And so I'm really passionate to pay it forward and uh, teach other women this, this, this uh, lifestyle medicine. And then uh, a lot of my training has also incorporated neuroplasticity and epigenetics because you can do the work yourself or you can put it on autopilot training your autonomic nervous system to do it quantum style for you. So you don't have to work quite as hard, right? I mean, who doesn't want that? Yeah. So I've incorporated rituals and biohacks and meditations so that you can put it on autopilot and train the autonomic nervous system. Just like you don't have to tell your heart to beat 72 times a minute. You don't have to tell your lungs to contract and expand. Those are all autonomic means automatic. So it's under the purview of the autonomic automatic nervous system. So if we can allow the endocrine balance again to come into optimal balance of the ANS, the autonomic nervous system, then it will do it for you. And so you don't have to struggle and work so hard. Wow. Who, who wants that, right? Oh my gosh, absolutely. Right, right? 
So, wow. yeah. I love that. What a inspiring, you know, area to take advantage of. It's like, why, uh, like the saying work smarter, not harder. Like exactly. Take, take advantage. Exactly. Exactly. Why work smarter, not harder. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wow. So hormones have actually been something that over the past few years have really been, um, brought to my attention more. And I've really Mm -hmm. been recognizing how important it is to understand the role that they play in our health and how we can support them and everything. And so for our viewers, I'd love for you to get into why are hormones so important for our health and what are some signs and symptoms when they're out of balance too? Absolutely. Great question. So Hormones are chemical messengers between our emotions and our physiology. And they're really the holy grail when it comes to controlling how we look and feel. They control everything from your mood, your metabolism, your fat loss, your skin and hair quality, how sharp and uh, active your brain is, your brain focus. I mean, So there's so many different symptoms that comes from hormonal imbalances. Some of the imbalances can range, obviously, which uh, most people are familiar with, things like, you know, that belly fat, also known as the abdominal obesity, where women come to me and they're like, gosh, I don't get it. You know, all the tips and tricks that I did in the past, the calorie restriction, the fasting, I'm working out with a, a personal trainer five days a week, you know, sweating it out at the gym, doing these insanity workouts and P90X and all of that. And I'm actually putting on more fat. And I'm like, yeah. So one of the big mistakes is that uh, now all exercise is catabolic, right? So it raises cortisol. Mm -hmm. Cortisol, uh, let me back up a little bit. So the hor- hormonal balance, think of it as an orchestra, you know, like there's an ensemble of players, but there's the conductor that controls all the players, the violin, the cello, and all of that. So cortisol is the conductor. Hmm. Cortisol is your main stress hormone. So when cortisol is out of whack, it will jam up your thyroid receptor, which is responsible for your fat burning and metabolism and dim and bigger. So there's nothing really wrong with the thyroid. Oftentimes people will turn to, oh, well, I need you know more thyroid hormone. You, they may not necessarily need more thyroid hormone. What they need to do is to have cortisol come down in its sweet spot. So it's not jamming the thyroid receptor wow. or it's not jamming the progesterone receptor. Progesterone is our natural valium. So it gives you that, that deep restorative sleep. That's one of the first imbalances too that women notice is that, gosh, I'm tired, but wired, you know, I fall asleep. Uh, but then I'm up several times during the night and I just get really um, not restful sleep. So Mm -hmm. that's another key uh, symptom. So hot flashes where you have that sudden heat spreading through the upper parts of your body, uh, elevated, accelerated heart rate, uh, anxiety, brain fog, where you just feel like, gosh, I used to be sharp as a tack and just blow through my to-do list. And now it's just so much brain fog and your productivity is hampered. So all of those can stem from hormonal imbalances, hair loss, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. skin issues. Um, Yeah, so there's there's just a a plethora of symptoms that can stem when the hormones are misfiring. And the challenge is that most people don't connect the dots because there's, again, it's such random symptoms that they don't realize Mm -hmm. that this is all stemming from hormones misfiring. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. So fascinating. So what are some of the things that like throw them off? Like you said, cortisol and and that being connected to stress and maybe like physical stress as well as mental, but, um, what are some other things that, you know, cause the imbalances? Yeah. So the biggest thing is, again, getting that cortisol in the sweet spot, you know, then there's, of course, insulin. Insulin is the number one metabolic hormone, and it's also the number one metabolic disruptor, which is why my 
free gift that I've included is uh, about the five biggest hormone mistakes and what you can do instead, right? In terms of what you're eating and, and drinking. And even when people think that they're eating healthy, I usually always roll my eyes when I have the initial consult because people say, oh, well, I eat really clean and I eat really healthy. I said, well, we'll, you know, we'll get to that at the end of the consult. You'll realize how healthy or clean you're eating at that point because okay. people do the best they, they can. And, you know, there's such, um, you know, there's such a labyrinth of information out there to navigate through that, you know, is it paleo, vegan, pegan? you know, what diet, keto, intermittent fasting, people are just so confused. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're doing the best they can, but they're often, there is that element of self-sabotage, you know, vegan mm -hmm. is basically people are just eating a lot of soy and mm -hmm. corn and refined carbs, which is really making their hormones go out of whack. So they think that they're doing something really great for themselves. And again, there's a time and a place for vegan. I'm, I'm not here to advocate any particular diet. I've really been trained in uh, one person's food is another person's poison. So really uh, custom curating a protocol, diet and lifestyle medicine for that individual is going to help them bridge the gap from where they are to where they wanna be. And depending on their goals, I mean, if you're an athlete and if you're working out, you know, four or five times a week, then the way you eat and what you do will be very different from somebody who's a little bit more sedentary. So if there's a lot of customization involved, but the biggest thing I see is again, the over-exercising, that's a big, big mistake, right? So people think mm -hmm. like, okay, eat less, exercise more. That is a fatal flaw, right? Your doctor just tells you, well, yeah, just eat less, exercise more. That is antiquated advice. All of those studies have been done on 25-year-old males. None of them apply to women, especially not midlife women over 35, right? Wow. So women actually get this. We have four times as many cortisol receptors in the fat cells around our belly than anywhere else. And so when you're doing that, you know, when you're over-exercising, it produces something called cortisol poisoning. And so you're literally signaling the body to deposit more fat around the belly. Whoa. Wow. So this is why, you know, when I started off earlier that women are coming to me, they're like, I don't get it. You know, I'm training. I'm like, yeah, you're over-training, you're over-exercising and you're literally signaling the body. You're in sympathetic dominance. So one of the other things is that the autonomic nervous system has two modes of operation, sympathetic and parasympathetic. All healing regeneration happens in parasympathetic. Mm -hmm. So you've got to actually back off and do gentler like yin yoga, or just, you know, less uh, high intensity interval exercise or burst training where you go full out for 20 seconds and then you recover. So you allow cortisol to get back in that sweet spot. You have that 10 second break. So that is, and, and you can really do a very efficient workout in as little as 15 minutes a day, one hour a week, as opposed to people doing the 60 minutes cardio and creating the, the cortisol poisoning. So <sighs> over-exercising is, is another big mistake. And then again, with the diet, you know, the processed foods, the, the, the low fiber. Fiber is the unsung hero when it comes to hormone uh, hormones balance. Wow. Because the, yeah, the way I approach uh, hormones balance is balancing the entire HPA axis, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, and it's a triage of three systems. So first thing we do is balance the blood sugar because without, like I said, insulin is the number one metabolic hormone. And that is the first to tip the scales in that exquisite hormone balance if it's out of whack. Mm. So first thing we do is balance the blood sugar. I have, I use the PFF, protein, fat, and fiber formula in my book, Cravings Cure. And that works, it's a blood, and I've demonstrated that with super yummy recipes for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and mouth-watering dessert. So you can basically have your cake and eat it too. So it's not about denial. Yeah, it's not about denial and deprivation and staying away from your favorite foods, but it's about how to eat in a way that you can have your hormones work for you instead of against you. So that's the first step. 
Next thing we do is we heal and seal the gut wall because the, the gut microbiome plays a huge role in our hormones and our neurotransmitters and neuropeptides. For instance, many people who struggle with insomnia, they know about SSRIs, right? And they go to their conventional doctor, they'll give them a prescription for Valium or Ambien or something. But 95% of that feel-good hormone serotonin is produced in the gut, not in the brain. So when you're taking an SSRI, you're only addressing the 5% in, in the brain, but what about the 95% that's produced in the gut? And so wow. if you can uh, balance your microflora and your microbiome by uh, driving out the pathogenic bacteria, the pathogenic bacteria uh, thrive on sugar and processed food. So if you're eating a diet predominantly high in processed carbs and sugars, then you're inviting more of those pathogenic bacteria like, like candida and yeast. And then they're the ones that are literally barking for sugar. I tell my clients this all the time when they come and say, gosh, I have wilted willpower. I'm like, it's not about willpower, it's about skill power. And we're only 90% we're 90 bacteria, we're only 10% human. Wow. It's the bacteria, there's 500 pounds of bacteria and a gazillion different species, and they'll control your metabolism and which neurotransmitters get synthesized. So yes. a lot of the work is uh, upregulating and balancing your microbiome. Mm. So that's step number two. And then step number three, I have never met a person who has hormonal imbalances who also doesn't have a sluggish liver. Because again, the, the liver is the main organ of detoxification that's responsible for eliminating all the metabolized. Metabolized just means the used up hormones and to get them, drive them out of the system. Mm -hmm. So like estrogen pathways, it's metabolized out of the liver. But if the liver is sluggish, again, from like, you probably heard of the term fatty liver. They used to think it was from alcohol, but now they call it non-alcoholic fatty liver. Mm -hmm. It's all from an overabundance of carbs and sugars, right? So when the liver is sluggish, it's not eliminating those uh, metabolized hormones. So it makes a U-turn and comes back like bad karma. Mm. And that's the golden rule of estrogen is you want to use it or lose it. You don't want it to come back. When it comes uh. back, that's what creates something called estrogen dominance. And estrogen dominance leads to you know painful periods, uh, mm. fibroids, cysts even hormonal cancers. So yes. it's very important to upregulate the organs of detoxification uh, to have hormonal balance. So that's the approach I have, the three-step. Wow. Oh my gosh. Just listening to you, I feel like so many dots were connecting in what I am experiencing in my own life. And um Oh, it's just so exciting. I'm, I'm just loving oh, this. <laughs> yeah. Share, share. Like, what did you, uh, what, what were the dots that connected for you personally? Yeah. So, um, I definitely think that I have like a estrogen dominance, dominance. Mm -hmm. and I've even been like hearing so much about how, um, there is such a increase in, of estrogen that we're just like getting bombarded with, like from exactly. BPAs and plastics to At tap waters to even like receipt paper, I've heard. Exactly. BP, exactly. And the receipt paper. Yeah. They're called xenoestrogen. So they mimic mm. estrogen, but it's not like the estrogen produced in the body. And, and that mm. can also lead. So yeah. Yeah. So it's true. Yeah. So, and something that I've heard, and I'd love to hear what you think on this is that um, a good thing to balance that is getting in hot baths or like saunas, like to sweat them out. Like, is that right? So you must, you must have been a mind reader because I was just going to touch on that. <laughs> Infrared saunas, even traditional saunas, if you don't have access to that, uh, those are detox powerhouses. So yeah, a lot of the, the toxins are fat soluble. And so they, they, they stay in your fat. 
but this infrared is is deeper than the superficial sauna. It gets to that dermal, it, it penetrates the epidermis and it gets into the fat cells and it can liberate those toxins from your fat cells. Mm -hmm. So it can be extremely beneficial, especially for those with thyroid disorders, mm -hmm. hypothyroid, subclinical hypothyroid, estrogen dominance, PCOS, endometriosis, a lot of these um, is to have 15 minutes of sauna time. I love the new, uh, they now have it here. Uh, I'm sure, you, and you guys have it in California. You're in California, right? I'm in Connecticut. Uh, oh, you're in Connecticut. Well, in California, they started, I don't know how, but it's called Hot Works. I'm, I'm not affiliated with them at all, but I just threw that out because they've combined infrared sauna with yoga and high intensity interval training. Oh, so you wow. can go in one of these cubes, get heated up and do like your yoga or hit workout in 20 minutes so i think it's really powerful and magical i love yes yeah. i'm a huge fan of the hot yoga we have a lot of yeah. those studios around here yeah. yeah yeah but those the hot yoga is not far infrared this is a different right. this is infrared and it penetrates into oh the God. fat cells and it liberates those toxins so it's it's even has a it's like a boost yeah it's like uh hot yoga on steroids yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'll have to see if there's anything around here. I'm not that yeah. far from New York city. And so, you know, oh, I'm sure. they yeah, they have that. It's a franchise. Yeah. yeah. It's a franchise and it's, and it's really cool. Yeah. Wow. So that, that's a, that's a big detox powerhouse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Great. So many yeah. awesome suggestions there. A another big suggestion is to really fire up your fiber intake. I'm a huge fan of, uh, the cruciferous vegetables, especially broccoli sprouts. It contains something called sulforaphane, and that really helps the liver detoxify those bad estrogens. There's bad estrogens and there's good estrogens. So you want to eliminate the bad ones and keep the protective estrogens. Hmm. So uh, broccoli sprouts, you can grow them on your own. There's you know, YouTube videos out there now that you yeah. can teach you how to grow your own broccoli sprouts. But if you're too lazy, like I am, I often just always consume them uh, because they're, they're magical when it comes to estrogen detoxification and hormone balance. It has hmm. this compound called indole-3-carbinol, I3C. And if you're not a fan of uh, cruciferous vegetables, which I know many aren't, you can just supplement with something called DIM, diendol methane, and calcium d glucoronate. That can be very helpful for um, estrogen metabolism and uh, eliminating estrogen dominance. Wow. Oh. Yeah. That's so good to know. Yeah. And you're inspiring me again to... Um get back into growing. I have a little sprout grower and it's so simple. It's like it two trays exactly. and the top is just kind of like a mesh. And then the bottom one, you just fill it like with a little tiny bit of water, keep that, that going. And within days, they just pop right up. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And it's so simple. You can throw it in your salads and your soups. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, love Huge, that. Uh, detox powerhouse. Yeah. So mm, I had no idea how beneficial mm -hmm. they were. <laughs> yeah. And broccoli sprouts more than broccoli. Although of course all cruciferous vegetables are good. The ones that have the bitter, like the arugula and the dandelion, those are really good for the liver. Mm. But so you can also, there's something called digestive bitters, Swedish bitters, which you can consume. They come in uh, a little drop dropper full. You can just take a dropper full before your, your meals. And that also uh, boost the, the detoxification capacity of the liver. So you can do that, consume wow. more arugula, broccoli, but broccoli sprouts definitely get the, the gold star when it comes to that. Mm. Oh, wow. Incredible yeah. advice. Oh my yeah. gosh. I love this, that, you know, we can just start implementing like immediately. It's so helpful. Thank you so much. And it's so simple, you know, yeah. anyone can jump into a sauna, Anyone uh -huh. can grow broccoli sprouts and just, uh, like I said, be very mindful of the process. When you're eating out, the, the processed foods are really high in the xenoestrogens and mm. something called oxidized fats. Like, you know, when you're eating damaged fats, that leads to a lot of um, oxidation in the body, which again, uh, ramps up the burden for the liver. 
So always ask for, I just say that I'm allergic to other plant-based oils like the canola, corn, sunflower, safflower, and can I just have olive oil or real butter? Not the synthetic butters, but real butter. Mm. So those are the healthy fats that, uh, that really uh, lower the burden on the liver. Mm. So reduce wow. your um, processed carbs, xenoestrogens, and uh, the fake fats and the processed fats, and that will go a long way towards hormone balance as well. Mm, absolutely. I feel like more and more these days, I'm hearing of people becoming increasingly sensitive to oils, like mm-hmm. just from eating out and things like that. And yes. yeah, it's like not really talked about, like when you think about, cause it's also like, Oh, you think you're eating healthy. You're eating like a, yeah. some vegetables, but if they're it's covered in this canola oil, oil yeah. or, or soybean oil, it's not really helping. That's the, that's what I started out with. Like people are always doing what they, they're like, I eat really healthy. I eat really clean but they just don't know what they're, you know, that's why they call it a blind spot. I'm like, you don't know, you can't see what it is that you can't see, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why sometimes it's really beneficial working with a coach, because not just in terms of what you're eating, but also in terms of some of the limited beliefs and the thinking, thinking patterns that we have, right? Because your thoughts and beliefs are your biggest endocrine disruptors. Wow. So I always say, Uh, try the elimination diet, which I'm not talking about conventional diet, like carbs, fats, and proteins, but eliminate anger, guilt, shame, resentment, blame for an hour, 10 minutes, or 10 seconds, and see how your hormones bloom, because Mm. that is a huge game changer. Mm. Wow. Yes. I just recently heard someone say that resentment is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person yeah, to die so true like, that's a that's an old zen saying exactly yeah anger resentment all of that is like you're poisoning yourself and waiting for the other person to die but you're only harming yourself and so um that's where you know joe dispenza's work come in is that your personality which is how you think and how you feel creates your personal reality, whatever it is that you're going on, whether it's a diseased reality or a wonderful one with wholeness and joy, right? But it's like how you think and how you feel. And so you've got to break that pattern Mm -hmm. because if you keep thinking and feeling that thinking, feeling loop, like, I mean, I've had it, we've all had it. We've all been through it, we've all had our wounds if you keep licking our wounds and keep saying, well, I'm hurt or I'm wounded or I'm anger, angered or angry at someone, well, that person is going on merrily with the rest of their life, but the only one you're harming is yourself. So you've got to break mm-hmm. that, that thinking, feeling loop, uh, what he calls pruning old synaptic connections and sprouting new ones, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's what I meant earlier when I said putting it on autopilot, because that is the biggest thing that derails hormones is those old patterns of thinking, limited beliefs, like, oh gosh, this weight loss thing is too hard, or I can never get off the sugar. You know, I am doomed to being a sugar addict. If that's how you, if that's a belief, then then your uh, biochemistry will perpetuate that and will become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Wow, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, it's incredible too. Like we've touched upon this throughout the summit on just the science behind the power of our thoughts. And I just love how it keeps surfacing and even how it plays into that phrase that we were talking about of it. It's like you're drinking poison while you are actually poisoning yourself with your bad thoughts. Like, you actually are. Not right. just a, a, an energy. Mm-hmm. Which and even in that, it's like just energy is everything. Like energy yeah. is creating the physical. So absolutely. And and speaking of that, you know, it's um uh, Inside, I mean, energy is everything, like you said. Mm-hmm. Inside the, of the cell is 99.99999% energy and right. 0.00001% matter. So when we do all these different interventions with food, with whether it's drugs, whether it's nutraceuticals, supplements, that's 
doing everything matter to matter. So it's matter changing matter, right? And that can work, but it can take a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Or you can change the energy, change how you think and feel, change the energetic expression, your electromagnetic signature, and boom, you know, you can see things like stage four cancers and MS and Alzheimer's and dementia disappear. In fact, at Joe Dispenza retreats, I just came back from one, we typically see people with canes, you know, abandon their canes and start walking because in that moment, they connected with that divine energy. They changed their electromagnetic signature and they are free from that disease. Wow. So, uh, you know, it was so ironic. Like the, I've been doing this for 10 years and I was so puritanical and didactic about what I eat and no sugar, no gluten, dairy, corn, soy, you know, all of this stuff. And then some other practitioner, this naturopath doctor, she said, maybe do you think that you're too rigid? And I'm like, yeah, I, I you know, you, you, it, you know, we call it orthorexia, which mm -hmm. is health professionals have it where you're mm -hmm. overly consume. And then that's still brewing fear, right? Because anytime right. I'm going outside or anytime I'm like, oh my God, does this have gluten? Does this have dairy? Does this have sugar? Mm -hmm. Well, it's nice to be mindful, but not to the extent where it consumes your thoughts, right? Because then that's still creating fear and that's just creating organic uh, fear proteins, right? You're eating all this organic, but you're creating organic fear and that's still messing up your endocrine balance and your hormones. So, so that was a huge lesson for me to sort of ease into it and not be that regimented, not be, it's not even disciplined. It's I used to call it discipline, but I'm like, that's like very militant mm. and uh, it doesn't really serve you. No, no. I've experienced that as well. I'm so glad that you're bringing this up because yeah. I went through like being vegan and yeah. it becoming so toxic in this thing exactly. that you're trying to do to benefit yourself. It's like, it exactly. not only in like my own, like emotional responses to it, but like it became in between me and relationships with people. Oh, like, huge. That's, that's it. I'm so glad yeah. you brought that up because you, you become social pariahs, right? I went yeah. through a period where I couldn't go out to eat because it's like, oh, well, here comes this diva. She's not going to eat this, that, and there's, yes. you know, there's a litany of things I can't eat. I can't be invited out or I go. So it just becomes very isolating. Yeah. And guess what? Cancer cells are the most isolated cells in the body. I realize that. So it's like when you isolate yourself like that because you're so rigid about your food and meals, then, then you're actually brewing more disease. So I'm mm -hmm. not saying throw it all out the window and you know don't be concerned about what you eat. I'm still very careful. Mm -hmm. but don't have that militant approach. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's like having that bird's eye view and looking at the whole spectrum of everything, the energy, the exactly. approach, the, exactly. the feeling that you're having. Like, oh my gosh, exactly. I, I heard recently that when you eat under a stressful condition, mm -hmm. even the amount of nutrients you absorb is like so much less than if you were to eat the same thing under like a peaceful condition, like your body actually absorbs more of the nutrients. So, oh, that that's huge. In fact, when you're like, if you've had an altercation with something, somebody, or you're mad at someone and you try to eat, what happens? The food just sits there like mm -hmm. a ton of bricks, right? The, you, you won't digest in fact, because you're in fight or flight. So mm -hmm. all the right, blood right. rushes to the limbs or the head. So you can either fight this predator or flee from the situation. But the body is like, this is not the time to digest food. So it's not going to digest. And you're going to have gas and bloating and all kinds of other digestive imbalances because the body is like, hey, Sarah's being chased by a tiger. This is not yeah. the time to sit and digest her food. I mean, that's the last thing on its mind. Yes. Oh, Wow. Well, I feel like we could just talk for days on this. I'm just yes, having so much fun beautiful. here. <laughs> yeah, me too. But um, yeah, we're pretty much at the end of our time. So I would love for you to share with the viewers what you have for them as your free gift. Absolutely. So I've created this report called the Hormone Myth Breakthrough Blueprint. And it, it, it unveils the bitter truth about 
five, the five biggest hormone mistakes that women make. And they won't hear about this from their doctor. Again, doctors are well-meaning, skilled in pharmacology and disease management, but they don't know much about nutrition and lifestyle medicine. So the biggest question uh, I get when I speak to my clients is, why did, why did my doctor or my trainer never tell me about this? Mm. I'm like, I don't know, but because they don't know about it, right? So these are some of the biggest things I've seen over and over in my practice. Mm -hmm. And it's just mind blowing how you can and what you can do instead. So make sure you download that free report. Absolutely. <laughs> Wow. I can't wait to check that out myself. And that's going to be so beneficial for everybody watching. So definitely check it out. I'll email you the links and thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you for having me and uh, we'll connect soon. Yes. Thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you tomorrow for our final speaker. So be sure to tune in and I will see you then. Have a happy and healthy day. Wow, you guys, how awesome was that, right? I felt like we could just talk forever. <laughs> that was so much fun. So many incredible tips for detoxing and overall health. And, you know, I love that right off the bat, she was like, the key is to allow your body to really do the work for you, right? We're like, work smarter, not harder. And she talked about our autonomic nervous system which is the automatic, right? It's the part of our system that controls our heart rate, controls our breathing, um, controls the work of all of our organs, right? We don't have to think about those things. They just happen automatically. And so how can we wire up our bodies to do more things automatically for us that are beneficial? And um, it really does have so much to do with the nervous system, right? Living in more of the parasympathetic nervous state the relax, rejuvenate rather than the sympathetic of like fight or flight. So, so cool to learn about hormones, right? She said hormones are chemical messengers between our emotions and our physiology. What an incredible uh, interview to bring together that fusion that's really been coming out of the summit of our emotional state, our energetic state, and how it impacts the physical beyond really anything else. And uh, she said they are the holy grail when it comes to controlling how we look and feel. It controls our ho hormones, control everything from our mood to our metabolism and fat loss to skin and hair quality to a sharp and active brain and our ability to focus. So she said a example of an imbalance is <clears throat> having um, accumulated belly fat over the abdominal. And this was so great. I thought when she said to think of the hormones, think of your ho hormone balance like an orchestra, right? So you have the conductor that controls all the players and cortisol is really the conductor. And so when cortisol is out of whack, everything else, right? All the other players fall out of line. And so she's like, when cortisol is, you know, all revved up, it jam, jams up our thyroid receptor, which is responsible for fat burning, for metabolism. She said for our vim and vigor, right? Our energy, our vibrancy. So we need to have cortisol in control and to come down and be in balance as opposed to like before, you know, we should consider adding any additional hormones, right? Some other symptoms of imbalance when hormones are misfiring, she said, is having unrestful, restless sleep, waking up through the night, hot flashes, an elevated heart rate, anxiety consistently. Uh, brain fog, hair loss, and skin issues, right? It could be all over the board. They really do impact every part of our body. So number one is to get cortisol in that sweet spot. 
And then also to look at our insulin. She said insulin is the number one metabolic hormone, and it could also be the number one metabolic disruptor, right? So over-exercising, I love getting into this conversation, is a huge mistake when it comes to losing weight, our overall health. Um, the whole uh, myth of eat less, exercise more, like that must be the recipe to lose weight, right? Wrong. That is a fatal flaw, she said. And especially in women, since you know we're childbearing, our bodies are wired to procreate and continue on human life, right? There's so many things that we're so much more um, sensitive to so that we can like effectively successfully have children. So around our belly area, especially she said, we have four times as many cortisol receptors in the fat cells around the belly than anywhere else in the body. So, um, you know, this whole, uh, um, over-exercising thing, it reminds me that I learned one of the best things that you can do after, you know, she was saying, what is a really good uh, formula is like the hit workouts of like high intensity for a little while. So you do rev up the cortisol in a beneficial way, but the key is not to have it last and linger up high. So you want to have it drop back down relatively quickly. And a great way to do that is to actually just go for a walk after you do, you know, an intense workout, even if, after a stressful situation, one of the best ways to bring your nervous system down is a, just a walk. If you can be in nature, even better, right? With the energetic frequency, all the vibrations of the elements of nature and trees and plants and animals. Um, but even if all you can do is walk down the street, that we have so many receptors in our feet. And when we are walking, right? It's signaling like we're safe. Like we're calm. There's no danger. There's no need to run, right? So just that act of walking brings down the nervous system and brings down the cortisol levels. So remember that one. Um, she said over exercising can lead to cortisol poisoning, right? Because when we're like, you know, pushing our muscles to the to the limit and stretching, you know, past our edge. Like we're creating physical stress on our body, which reacts in a similar way to mental stress. So those cortisol levels go up and then we don't do anything to bring them back down. They stay up creating cortisol poisoning, which signals to the body to put on more fat. So the key is to utilize the parasympathetic nervous system, which is where the body does its healing, repairing fat loss. I remember uh, talking to my sister about how like when we get into a really good consistency with doing yoga in the morning, even if it's just like 15, 30 minutes, like I prefer an hour, but you know, if that's all you can do, just having that consistent time where you're actually allowing your breaths to grow as deeply as they can and allowing your, your center to come down and just to be so calm. It doesn't seem like you're working out that hard, but just that act of relaxing your nervous system can allow fat to just melt off of you, right? It's so incredible. So another thing she said is fiber is the unsung hero when it comes to hormone balance. It's so important to begin your hormone correction by balancing your blood sugar. And fiber is a great way to do that. I remember hearing that when you have a meal, if you start with your veggies, all the fiber in there comes down, comes through, coats the intestines, right? So then when you go on to the carbs, instead of having that like quick injection of, you know, it turns, metabolizes down to glucose, to sugar, the fiber allows that to process to slow. So it's more of a gradual release to keep the blood sugar balanced. So yeah, it's a great thing to do. Start with your veggies. Um, and then she said, you want to 
do the work to heal and seal the gut wall. And we talked about that before, how important that is, how that can cause inflammation and so many things. And she spoke again about how our gut microbiome plays a huge role in our hormones and our ability to have the proper firing of our neurotransmitters and neuropeptides and the produce of all the chemicals that we need for balancing and feeling, you know, happy and well, right? She said 95% of that feel good hormone serotonin is produced in the gut. So only 5% is in the brain. And she talks about, you know, all the prescriptions, medications out there um, that are focused on your brain chemistry when it's like the majority of the work is coming from the gut. We've got to look at the health of our intestinal walls, our uh, diet, right? Um, and it's so important to drive out the, again, pathogenic bacteria in the gut, the yeast, the mold, right? The bad bacteria that is, is controlling us as we talked about in the past. All of those things thrive off of sugar and processed carbs. Like she said, we're just inviting, creating this snuggly bed for these rogue entities to come in and, and post up inside of us, right? Viruses, cancer cells, you don't even realize. So some great things to help with that. Think about alkalinity. An alkaline system is a healthy system. It's an acidic system. Uh, overly sugar filled body that is going to be host to all these bad bacteria. So some incredible things to balance that are celery juice. Celery contains one of the highest content of a special uh, mineral salt to carry all that stuff out of our body. So when we juice it, it's like this magic, um, barley grass juice is one of the most alkalining things out there as well. I get it in a powder and mix it with water and to drink those things is a wonderful way to flush out all that bad stuff. This was amazing. She said 90% of the body is bacteria. So we're only 10% human <laughs> when you look at it like that. I mean, even across the top of our skin, like inside, outside, we're just covered in bacteria. And, and so much of the bacteria is, is beneficial, right? Probiotic bacteria, but it's keeping the balance and not letting the bad ones overrun us. So the other thing to be aware of is our liver. We talked so much about that this week. It's responsible for metabolizing, she said, used up hormones. So if we have a sluggish liver, she said that's the first sign of also hormone imbalance because it's not able to process them, right? So we talked about estrogens and used up estrogens as they are meant to be flushed out of the liver if they're not. Then she said they will make a U-turn, right? She said like bad karma and come back into the body creating dysfunction. We brought up the xenoestrogens that mimic estrogens and create imbalance that are, you know, from pesticides, plastics, BPAs, tap water, um, all the food being wrapped in plastic, you know, soy, uh, GMO, you know, just conventional stuff. At, even as uh, Sarah Banta talked about, all conventional livestock has an estrogen plug in their ear to pump them up with estrogen so that they become fatter. Like it's unavoidable. So it's like, how can we, again, just like talking about the frequencies, we can't avoid these toxic radio waves. Well, what can we do to protect ourselves from them? How can we have a better defense mechanism? So saunas, one of the best things. You can sweat out these excess estrogens. It's a detox powerhouse, she said. Infrared saunas, even better. Um, hot baths, Epsom salt baths. That's like my go-to. Um, and increasing the fiber. She said cruciferous vegetables are the best. Broccoli sprouts. That was so exciting to be reminded of that. It, has, it contains sulforaphane and which really helps the liver detoxify these bad estrogens. Uh, also contains indole 3 carbonyl I3C. And she said, you can also supplement these things. Um, DIM, DIN, DOLLY, methane, and calcium B-gluconate. 
um, these help metabolize the estrogens and eliminate that estrogen dominance, get things back in balance. Um, bitter greens, she said, is also incredible for the liver. Dandelion greens, arugula, all these, you know, types of bitter flavors. She also said you can take bitters in droppers, like before a meal. Uh, processed foods are high in xenoestrogens as well. All those, and those oxidized fats, right? Those damaged fats, those broken, incomplete uh, molecular fats, uh, the canola oil, palm oil, like vegetable oil, soy oil. Um, yeah, all that stuff that fries and all everything is fried in when you go out places. Even like we we're talking about, you think you're getting some good, you know, sauteed veggies at a restaurant, but if they're just cooked in this awful canola oil, they're just saturated in this fat that is causing dysfunction, ramping up the burden of your liver. So I love that she said that she just usually says like, oh, I'm allergic to oils. Um, I can only have olive oil, right? Or whole organic butter, right? Um, ghee is like one of my favorite go-tos for that. And coconut oil, love those uh, for cooking, especially. So um, yeah, reduce your carbs, reduce the fake fats, those exposure to xenoestrogens, and that'll go a long way towards balance and good health. Um, and then, oh my God, the end there, we just got into so many incredible topics, right? With um, the importance of having a coach. And just like this, it's like you think you're eating healthy and you don't even realize a coach will help you identify those blind spots, right? And anywhere that we're stuck inside of limiting beliefs that we don't even realize these like rules that we hold ourselves in, in our head. Like, I love the example of like being inside of a jar and you don't even realize what the label on the outside of the jar is because you're just inside of it and you need someone outside of you to look at it and reflect that to you. So it makes coaching such a powerful thing. She said, uh, quoted Joe Dispenza, your personality creates your personal reality. And this is where the talk got so incredible that, you know, when it really comes down to it, our energy, that mental detox part is the most important thing. Breaking that, she said, the thinking and feeling loop. You know, you think something, it makes you feel one way and then you feel that way. So then you keep thinking in that way. You keep gathering evidence to prove that, yeah, this is how it is. This is how I feel. As she said, it's like licking your wounds, just continuing to keep yourself stuck. You are what you think. So in terms of health, just like we've talked about in the past, when you, when it comes down to it and you really look at the science, the chemistry of it all, like the physics, right? Um, our cells are 99.9999999% empty space, energy. And so that's only 0.0000001% physical matter, which is just like everything else in space. So it's like, we're focused so much on the matter side, but look at what's taking up most of you know our makeup is the energy so it's like what's even more important than what we're putting inside of ourselves like we talked about if you're stressed out and you're eating and you're in fight or flight mode you're not even absorbing it it's less about what you do what you say what you eat and it's more the way that you do it the energy that you have behind it so powerful she was talking about how uh, one of our mentors who we share in common was sharing this example of there's a health food store right next to a movie theater. And in the health food store, it's filled with all these people who are so like adamant about, is this gluten-free? Is this sugar-free? Is this organic? Like, you know, and, and they're coming in and they have these issues. They, you know, are gluten sensitive or, you know, whatever. And you look at, a bird's eye view of their energy, the way they're going about seeking out these healthy things. They're so stressed about it. And then you look at the movie theater, which is just filled with, you know, sugary soda and artificial fat, butter covered popcorns and candies. But 
look at the energy in the people who are going there, you know, just full of excitement and laughter and joy and appreciation for life and for the people who they're with, right? And so you think about what kind of chemistry is going on inside of them. Yes, the, it's, it's about marrying the two, right? not being over analytical about doing everything by the book, but just looking at the energy, your approach, your appreciation for it all. So that I was like, what a beautiful way to bring this all full circle. So her free gift is um, her hormone myth breakthrough blueprint. Sounds so incredible. Um, that one might just take a little bit longer to get to you. It's just going through some updates right now. So I'll keep you updated with that. And tomorrow is our final speaker. It's going to be so great. Oh my God. It's going to be different. I'm so excited to share it with you. A little special um, for the end. So I'll see you then and have a beautiful rest of your day.